Welcome back to the show, everybody. This is the Shankly Sessions, the Liverpool podcast we bring you each and every week. This is your preview for the Crystal Palace game, Selhurst Park. Lunchtime again, folks. 12.30 kickoff. How do they get away with this? Just keep on pinning them on Sunday's early kickoffs. <clears throat> but again, another interesting game and another game that I feel will be more about the points than the performance. I think we're being really, really careful in our approach at the moment. A massive two weeks coming up for us. Got Crystal Palace today, an opportunity to go top of the table, uh, which we have to take and put the pressure on Aston Villa, Arsenal and Man City, who will be heading off for the World Club Cup. Um, but it's a massive game today at Selhurst Park, going to give us a different kind of challenge to Sheffield and Fulham, insofar as they're quite physical as a team, Crystal Palace. We have got history with them, and at times Selhurst Park hasn't been a happy hunting ground. Um, but we really need to be at it today, folks. We need to take an opportunity of this, and sometimes when that door of opportunity swings open, we ain't the best team to step through it and grasp it. So it really needs to happen today. Big, big game for a lot of these players as well. Some of these players have been underperforming and stuff like that, so they need to get into their rhythm today and see can they find some rhythm to their game. It's going to be difficult. Palace always make it difficult for us. But like I said, really, really important three points coming up. Um, for Palace at the moment, they're coming off that bad loss to Bournemouth as well, and kind of it's starting to creak there for Roy Hodgson at the moment in terms of Crystal Palace. Wilfred Saha exiting the building, and then they have a whole host of injuries that we go through in the team news. Uh, if you look at form at the moment, four losses in the league and a draw, one win and six, really, really poor for Crystal Palace. For us, it's four wins and two draws, of course, the two draws, Man City and Luton, which was really, really poor. The Man City one, we can understand, but there probably was more in it for us. But on the back of that, they have back-to-back wins against Fulham and Sheffield United. Both having to be ground out, and I think today will be more of the same. If you go into team news, let's look at Palace first. Key players Palace are missing at the moment. Check the core out, Tarek Mitchell out. Uh, Raksaki out, Rob Holding out, Dean Henderson out, SA out. He's huge for them, and Natalia Klein also missing as well. So we big, big players for Crystal Palace missing and not in a bloated squad either. So this is a time to go play them, get the points. Very important we go top of the league and heap the pressure on. Really, really, really important. City playing tomorrow could potentially be seven, anywhere between seven and nine points off the top of the league going into that game, pending the Aston Villa Arsenal result later. Could we still say top, potentially? Let's see what happens. Let's heap that pressure on Aston Villa. Unbelievable at home. Arsenal winning, 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 but still trying to find themselves at times against Lawns looked absolutely sublime, but have struggled at times as well. Villa Park, not an easy place to go under that pressure if we can heap it on. If you look at our own team news, of course, we've got the sad news that Joe Matip has ruptured his ACL. The gaffer spoke about it yesterday in the press conference. Um, a tough one to take, uh, especially where it's probably the end of a season. We may be able to get him back, and of course, we know it's his last season. So this is not the kind of send-off we wanted for our legend, Joe Matip. Um, but let's see what happens there. Let's see what comes out of the contract stuff and things like that. Let us know in the comments how you feel. Should we extend this contract based on all this stuff? Or is it time to prime maybe maybe get rootless and go right well enough is enough and we need to change obviously we're going to have to go into the market in january which will be huge for us as well and for liverpool at the moment alexis also potentially out as well got stitches in his knee and remember we have a massive two weeks coming up union first of all on thursday which is the free hip wholesale changes then we go into the weekend man united then i think we have west ham and the carabao cup and then we have arsenal so a massive two weeks coming up where anything can change. By the time these three matches are played, we'll know whether we're in a toilet race or not. Really, really important that we get it done. But Alexis, as I said, potentially out with stitches to the knee. And I think Klopp is going to be really careful here because he has to make sure that we have those key players ready for the next two games coming up in the league, which are massive. Um, we did get the news that Alisson is back in training. He's been back in training for two days now. Does he start against Crystal Palace? And what a lift that would give the side. No disrespect to Quivine, who's been a very good deputy and always is. But uh, Alisson back in the side would give the side a huge lift going into this Palace game. Does he risk him? Does he risk him before those two big games? Let's see what happens. 
Um, Diogo Jota, of course, still out with that, that uh, muscle issue. Stefan's still out, Thiago's still out, Andy's out still with the shoulder. But it'll be interesting to see if Alisson starts. That would be really, really cool. What do we make? Who's going in there? Are we going Endo still in the six? Gravenberch to replace McAllister. Would you go with Curtis Jones? Let's see what happens. Um, so let's go into the starting lineups. And for Palace, a much changed Palace side. Johnson, Ward, Anderson, Gahey, Klein, Richards, Lerma, Elise, Hughes, Ayu, and Edward. Now we know where the danger comes from. Edward, we've seen Ayu with those strong, powerful runs. Elise, and we know how clever he is on the ball. We know the strength of Lerma. And of course, Anderson and Gahey going up for those set pieces again. We have to warn set pieces, corners, free kicks, all that. Don't give them away easy. That's where they tend to get their joy. So like I said, a massive game coming up. Nothing but three points today, Reds. Not necessarily about performance. We'd love to see a performance and find a bit of rhythm for these two big games coming up. But if we don't get that, a minimum, the three points is what we need. I'm going to go for Liverpool 3-1. I think we may cough up an opportunity to them. But I think we might have too much. And of course, what do we want to see happen? Mo Salah with number 200. That's what we want to see. Get that off his back. And then he can go on a madness against Man United and Arsenal potentially. But let's get 200 off his back first of all. Uh, I'd like to see a big game from Luis Diaz today. I think he's been energetic. I think we've seen shades of him now changing his game up a little bit. As I said the other night in the match reaction, making those runs to the outside rather than cutting in all the time. So he's getting defenders thinking all the time rather than playing the obvious. Um, big game for Virgil van Dijk today in terms of managing on the pitch, being that coach, being vocal, talking to his players. We've seen it the other night against Sheffield United. Great to see that Virgil back as well as well as his form in his own defending and stuff like that. He's been absolutely exquisite. Let's continue that today. We know that Palace will be much more physical than the teams we faced. So let's match them for that physicality as well. Big Dom in there in the midfield as well with those powerful runs. That's what we want to see. Who goes in beside Virgil today? Is it Konate? That's what they're saying here at the moment. Could it be Joe Gomez? Those Costas come back on the left side now to give us that bit of energy and that bit of quality in that final ball. He has missed it this year, but it is slowly coming back. Let's see how it goes. Do we put Darwin in there from the start? Captain Chaos certainly has a score to settle with Anderson. Let's see how that goes as well. So many layers to this onion today, folks. But the main thing is three points and go top of the league. Folks, smash that subscribe button and no bell and subscribe and bell notification button I should say too early to be doing this hit a like on the video share the content check out Spotify as well follow us on all the socials we will be back later with a match reaction let's see at the end of today who sits top of the Premier League let's go Reds